University Professor Shabir Madi. Of course, treating coronavirus is one of the big issues, Professor. But before I get there, I wonder just if I could uh, draw on your broad knowledge of just the virus in general. Many South Africans are panicked. We understand that shops have already run out of masks and all sorts of other immune boosters. Uh, how should we be responding to the news of this confirmed case? Yeah, so thank you for having me. So without wanting to undermine the importance, the significance of this one case in South Africa, I think we need to be calm and collected in terms of our response, yeah. both in terms of the general public as well as in terms of politicians. Because we just heard in the National Assembly right now a, a lot of politicking around the whole issue of coronavirus, which is really put out of context in terms of the broader issues facing us in the public health sector in South Africa. Sure. So the question is how should we protect ourselves or what should we do as South mm -hmm. Africans? The first thing is we need to understand how this virus spreads. Now, it's still at early stage, despite the virus being around for three months, it's relatively at an early stage in terms of fully understanding the manner in which this virus transmits between one, one person to another. What we do know about it is that it's airborne spread and it's usually people infecting themselves because of coming into contact with droplets in which the virus exists. So as an example, if you're ill and you're infected with virus and you cough, those droplets are going to spread in the environment and someone that might be unfortunate might be facing you and you might sneeze into, sneeze into them or cough into their face. Mm -hmm. They might become infected by virtue of these droplets actually landing in the eyes or then breathing it in. But another way in which someone can become infected is basically touching a contaminated surface. So if I were to sneeze here, right, and if I were to be infected with the virus and the surface is contaminated, you wouldn't be able to see these droplets, but the next guest that comes here touches the surface sure. and then wipes their eyes or wipes their nose, they're going to become infected by virtue of that indirect contact with me. Mm. Right? So it's this droplet spread. So the way to actually protect yourself from the, getting infected with this virus, there's no foolproof way, first and foremost. Sure. Right? The chances of there being a mass outbreak of South in South Africa at this point in time because of the one identified case is very, very small. Mm. Right? But that's at this point in time. The best way to protect yourself from the virus is to become obs obsessive with something that should be done as a routine, and that is basic hand washing or, hand -washing, or using some sort of a sanitizer and rubbing it mm -hmm. when, you, when you get into contact with other people or when you're in contact with sort of surfaces. So I can't overemphasize the importance of basic hygiene related to hand washing, much, much more important than what we see happening where people are wearing masks. Mm -hmm. The mask is really more useful in terms of interrupting the transmission of the virus, not to protect yourself from getting infected, but rather from you infecting others. Mm. So individuals that are sick, that have got a cough, that have got a runny nose, right, those are the ones, if they are infected with the virus, that's going to spread it to other people, that are going to spread it to the environment. Those are the individuals that need to be wear wearing a mask, not the person that doesn't have any symptoms. Sure. Right? What's more important for them is to go back to basic principles in terms of hand hygiene to minimize their chances of becoming infected with the virus. I want to talk about, you know, just part of what you said around how coronavirus is actually spread. We have now this individual who, individual who was on a flight from Italy. Now, the minister says he wasn't showing any symptoms when he landed at Oartam International Airport and then caught another flight to KZN. Uh, now, airplanes are quite constricted spaces and Unfortunately, um, you know, the spread of disease there, is it a higher risk than perhaps um, if you were just walking around? Right. So there's two, parts, uh, there's two parts to this answer. Sure. The first part is why didn't we pick this individual up at the port of entry with the screening that we've got? Now remember, the type of screening that we've got is geared towards identifying the symptomatic individual, the person that's got a fever. So when you're walking at O.R. Tambo, they've got these thermal scanners and they detect who's got a fever and then they would pull that person aside to interview them in terms of their travel history as an example. Mm -hmm. Now, what we know about the virus is that it's got what we call an incubation period. That is, after a person becomes infected, there's a period of time when a person might show no symptoms. The, the mean duration of that incubation period is about five days, which means from the time of infection to the time of becoming symptomatic, there's about a five-day lag before you become symptomatic, before you start coughing, before you start developing a fever. And that can go up to 14 days. So it's no surprise that the few people that are infected with the virus would actually pass through our ports without being identified as being high risk by virtue of them being in this incubation phase of the virus. Yeah. And that's the reason why this case was missed. And that's probably the reason why other cases might well, might, might well have been missed already, uh, even before this case actually entered the port. So that's the reality in terms of the limitations 
which are innate to the type of screening measures that we've got in place. And it's not unique to South Africa. It's global. It's, people are, use a symptomatic approach in terms of trying to identify individuals that might actually be infected. Now, what is the issue in terms of the transmission by this one person to other individuals, mm -hmm. both in the plane as well as in the community? So when you're in this, in this incubation period, what we believe happens is that the amount of virus that you're shedding is fairly low. Right? So, and you're not symptomatic, so you're not coughing, so you're not contaminating the environment, you're not infecting people around you. So the amount of virus and the chances of you infecting someone adjacent to you or even someone in your vicinity, even in a crowded plane, is very small in the presence of being asymptomatic. Mm. Right? Once you start coughing, what, what we know is that the amount of virus that starts occupying the, the back of the throat sure. increases. Right? So a person becomes more infectious. And it, it, is, it is at that point in time that the person is more likely to start spreading the virus in the environment. It is that, at that point in time that the person is more likely to start infecting people around him. Sure. So there's two parts. Like I said, if a person is completely asymptomatic, they can pass through our borders without us knowing that a person has been infected with coronavirus, and that appears to be the, the instance in this particular sure. case. But at the same time, the chances of that person having infected many people on the plane is fairly limited because the amount of virus that person may have been shedding is probably very low, if any, if he wasn't coughing. That Professor Madhu, we're quickly running out of time. Let's get to the treatment aspects then of the coronavirus because that would be the next phase for many who are infected. Right. Uh, for a disease that doesn't quite have a cure yet, uh, what does the treatment process look like? Right. So the, the management of coronavirus illness is really symptomatic management, which means that we need to try to provide supportive care. In this individual, as an example, a person is mildly ill, he's sitting at home, he needs to isolate himself to prevent, to avoid infecting other people. So there isn't much you can actually offer this individual if he doesn't have severe disease. Once you start developing a pneumonia, which is what the big problem is with this coronavirus, then what needs to happen is that you need to get supportive therapy. And the type of supportive therapy I'm talking about is the need for the person to get oxygen. And in a worst case scenario, the person might end up in a ICU and require ventilation yeah. to support the breathing. But that's a worst case scenario. So it's really a symptomatic approach and it's really treating the signs and the symptoms of the individual. There isn't, it's a generic approach that we would use in terms of treating anyone else that has got a pneumonia, except for some f forms of pneumonia. As an example, bacterial pneumonia, together with the symptomatic treatment, we also have antibiotics, which we can use to try to reduce the severity of the illness. And of course the mortality rate though, although it's over 3,000 people, it still remains relatively low when you take a look at the number of people who've been infected with this virus. Correct, so the mortality rate range, the estimates at the moment is between one to three uh, percent. But at the same time, the number of people that this virus infects. So the mortality rate on its own is a meaningless number. It really depends on the total number of people that are actually infected. So as an example with influenza virus, one third of the population in South Africa will be infected with influenza virus each year. Mm -hmm. The mortality rate is only about 0.1%. Sure. But between four and 10,000 people are going to die this year from a viral infection in South Africa, and that is influenza virus, not coronavirus. Mm -hmm. right? We've got interventions, we've got vaccines to prevent influenza virus, yet people don't get vaccinated. Right? But we worried about coronavirus at this point in time where the chances of, being, of it being as widespread in terms of community infection mm -hmm. compared to influenza virus is very, very slim at this point in time. Sure.